A newspaper reports that between 52% and 58% of voters agree with the bill. Find the point estimate and the margin of error. So we can write this confidence interval as a set of proportions, 0.52 up to 0.58. And uh, because these percents were just obtained by proportions. So if the proportion is 0.52, that's analogous to saying the, that we have 52% of, of the voters. Now, the point estimate is going to be always right in the middle of a confidence interval. So this green is the confidence interval. The point estimate is right in the middle. So our point estimate, p hat, that's the point estimate of the proportion. It's not the true proportion. We don't know what the true proportion is. If we did, we wouldn't be doing a confidence interval. But it's right in the middle. So you could think of it as the average of those two numbers, 0.55, or 55%, or 0.55. Now, the error, the margin of, of, of error, E, is the distance from the middle to either side. That's E. So how far are we between 52% and the middle? Well, it's 3% or 0 0.03 as a proportion. So that's just the quick answer to, to this question. But let's just elaborate just a little bit on what is going on with a confidence interval. The confidence interval takes a, a point estimate. And that's going to be from the, the sample data. And it's called an estimate because we don't know the true population parameter. That's, our, that's what we're guessing about. So our point estimate. Uh, for this example, it was p hat. So that is it, when you're trying to get some information or get your best guess on what is the population proportion, right? Parameter is telling something about the population. If you're trying to uh, find that population parameter, you take what the, the information that you have, the data that you have, and, uh, and you get a point estimate. The parameter is actually just a, a small p without the hat. When you see the hat, that's, a, that's an estimate. So, for example, if you're trying to find uh, what is the true mean? The proportion or the population mean is mu. But we get our best guess. We don't know the population mean, so we take our, a sample and we find the sample mean. Now the confidence interval, then to build this confidence interval, I'm going to abbreviate it CI, it's the, the point estimate, so I'll do p hat for our example, plus or minus the margin of error. So the paper could have, and a lot of times you'll see this, reported 55% agree, agree with this bill. And then they would say, oh, there's a margin of error of plus or minus 3%. So they're kind of telling you that, uh, that they've built the, the confidence interval with that information. Once in a while, you'll see the paper actually report, this is with a 95 or 98 or whatever uh, confidence interval or level of confidence. And it's not always going to be 95%. And by the way, this 95% has absolutely nothing to do with the 52 or 58%. You're going to use a percent also when you're doing a confidence interval about a mean. But this 95% level of confidence, that it brings into play how sure are you that your confidence interval contains the true parameter. So you could build a new confidence interval and increase this to maybe you want to use a 99% level of confidence. That would stretch this out because you're kind of you're casting a larger net. You're saying, hey, I'm 99% sure that my confidence interval contains the true parameter, but 
to do that, to be that much more sure, you need to cast a wider net. You need to have uh, your boundaries farther apart. So, and that then would give you a larger margin of error. So there's a little bit about confidence intervals, and, and we answered the question about the point estimate and the margin of error.